In Apex Legends, everything comes down to winning gunfights. Whether it's a team v team, a 1v3, 2v3, or just fighting off a third party. What's up guys, I'm Warlug, and today we're gonna take a deep dive into some of my clips to help you guys maybe improve your gameplay and kind of break down everything that's going through my mind in a play by play. So without further ado guys, we're gonna break down this clip that I have for you today, and it's gonna be all about repositioning to make two teams fight or clear out both teams at the same time. There's no sense into overcommitting in a fight, so let's break this down. So we're fighting over by cages when my teammate calls out that another team is pushing over from the tunnel. So I go to regroup with my teammate and pop a battery. So at this moment, I'm looking to see if I can get eyes on the other team coming out of the cave. Now I know that the first team is probably gonna push over because I'm weak, but I'm trying to get information on where the other team is. Trying to understand where both teams are at all times is just really good game awareness. I start to get shot from the first team that I was fighting as well as the team out of the tunnel. If you don't know where you're getting shot from, look at the indicators that appear on your map. They tell you exactly the direction that you're looking for. So all I wanna do here is create space between both teams and go for a spot that's away from both of the indicators from where I was being shot from. In the meantime, my teammate's giving me some cover fire, allowing me to heal while I suggest a safer place for both me and him to retreat to. Giving your teammate cover fire to allow them to heal is essential in a gunfight. So as we go over to these rocks for a safer position, I turn to look to see if the team is actually pushing us and I peek and I don't see anything. Creating space like this accomplishes two things. One, it allows us to get back to full strength so we can get back into the fight. And two, it opts for both teams to run into each other, causing them to fight and allowing us to third party. Now I notice my teammate called for a, an enemy pushing him. So I miss my sentinel shot and then we team shoot to get the knock on the first team. As I start to reload, I get shot by his teammate all the way up the hill. We are on the low ground, so we are at a small disadvantage, but I have a nice head glitch here. My teammate finishes his and I notice the Pathfinder trying to grapple on him. So I line up a crucial headshot with the Sentinel. I miss all of my car shots, but we happen to get the knock, which cleans up the very first team. After winning the first fight, notice how I'm not leaving my position. Never over committing or trying to push everything so fast is always important. Standing your ground and allowing those two teams to expose themselves gives you all the advantage. We have a really nice head glitch here and I want to abuse it while my teammate is on the low ground trying to heal. If we're both on the low ground, that puts us at a very big disadvantage, so I want to stay up here on the hill for as long as possible. Now that we eliminated that first team, we got to look around and see if we can spot team two. The first priority at this point is to get back to full health. My teammate has no shields and I have full shields with half health. We need to heal. But as soon as I start healing, we get shot by the second team. I fall behind cover, continuing to medkit. Now I jump and notice that an enemy is trying to push my teammate as I'm being arc star. So I avoid the arc star and peek the rock trying to assist my teammate. I lay down some good damage and let him know that he's on the rock above him. At this point, I'm trusting that my teammate's gonna win his 1v1 while I pop a bat to get back to full health and try to dodge even more arc stars that are being thrown at me. In this situation, there's a couple things I could do. I could slide down and help my teammate finish knocking the ash, or I could hold my ground, finish popping my battery, and try to locate the ash's teammate. In these situations, it's very important to trust your teammate after laying down a lot of damage for him or her to win their 1v1. Your job up here on the high ground is to figure out where the other teammate is. So I finish batting, I eat an arc star, and I see that a horizon ult has been thrown right on top of me. So the first thing I have to do is destroy it, and luckily my teammate lays down some fire, preventing the horizon from trying to push me. We crack the horizon, and she tries to queue up, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to finish the fight without my teammate being in any of the crossfire. I go to hit Horizon with a Sentinel shot for 63 flesh so I know that she's low. The objective right now is to kill the Horizon. I noticed shooting her that she was able to pop a battery, but still in this situation with my health, I'm still going to try to chase her down and finish the fight. At this point, my only goal is to kill the Horizon, so I continue pushing and applying the pressure which gives my teammate plenty of time to heal. Now she does happen to get away from me here because of a lucky Octane jump pad. I try to secure the kill, but then I just back off and let her just run away. 
Now the bloodthirst has set in, but an important note here, guys, is that you do not want to over pursue or over commit into a fight that you're not prepared for. At this point, I do not know where the horizon went and I'm not sure how healthy she is. She could have popped a battery, fully healed. The only information I have right now is my tracks indicating that she dropped down the hill. So I wanna turn back to my teammate and I wanna get, get back and regroup. Who knows if another team is coming from the, the river or from up from the, the, the two mountains there. We have no idea if another team is gonna try to third party or fourth party us. After replenishing some loot, my teammate calls out that the enemy horizon that got away is on the other side of the river and we can see that she's queuing up. We want to kill her for a couple reasons. We want to get her out of the game so there's one less team, but we also want to get the finish on her so that way we have both teams that tried to pinch us in the start of this video, both being killed by us because of our great repositioning inside of Apex and creating space between two different teams. So me and my teammate hop onto the zip line, double pushing the horizon because at this point it's a 2v1. I scan to get perfect information on her as my teammates hop to the right so we can get a good flank. I push straight up the gut and challenge the horizon, getting some nice damage on my hip fire with my car, and then we finish the fight in some team shooting. This fight is a great example of how utilizing space and creating space between two teams that are trying to push you is so vital. I think a lot of players underestimate the value of disengaging in a fight, especially when there's more than one team. There's so many times where you want to get all the kills and you want to kill every team, but there's times where you need to retreat and it's a smart retreat to back up and then just reformulate a strategy to get back in and win the entire fight. Me and Monsters here retreating and creating so much space between both teams not only allowed us to isolate each team one by one and winning those fights, but allowed us to win the game. So repositioning and disengaging from a fight is a strategy. It's not just running away and with your tail between your legs thinking it's a bad thing. It allowed us to win the fight and it was a pure strategy. Not only did it trick the enemies in thinking that we were so weak and so scared to fight that they overcommitted, which ended up being their downfall. So in the end, don't be afraid to disengage and create space between multiple teams that you're fighting so that way you can secure the win. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. This is something differently that we've done on the channel and I've really wanted to do for a long time. So I really hope that you guys did enjoy it. And if you did, please hit that like button. That really does help drive the video to more Apex Legends players to help improve their gameplay. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. All the support is absolutely appreciated. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Let me know down in the comments, guys. What do you think about these kind of gameplay analysis videos? Let me know if it does help you out in your gameplay. And if so, maybe we'll do a lot more of these on the channel. I really hope to. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.